Hi, I'm Darren from Isotonic Studios, and I'm here today to talk about a new product from KB Solutions, which is called Song Mode. Song Mode is compatible with the Push 1, Push 2, and we'll shortly have some versions for the Launchpad range as well. And what it is, is it's a simple approach to reconfiguring the way that you can play with your tracks in Ableton Live. Now, I'm gonna have a quick look at my set here. I've got a set of five tracks, and on the fifth track, I have the full track itself, but then I've got it split using Splitter, and I'll put a, a link in the, the bottom there, so that it separates it into the bass, the drums, other, and vocals, so I can solo out a particular part of the full track at any point. The full track itself is broken into sections, if you like, uh, such as intro, vocal, build, break, break two, etc. And then underneath that song, I've got the stop buttons. To the right, I've got another five tracks, totally identical setup, but I've removed the stop buttons to the right of this first song. And what that allows me to do, obviously, is to launch a scene and then move down. And then I perhaps could launch the scene of the next song and mix the two together. Of course, this blank strip there is my stop button of the first song. The only challenge with that Is this moving around? Now I could do it quicker in banks of eight, but wow, that, that song's got 40, 50 scenes. It's really long progression. And I don't wanna be spending my time navigating around my set to find the next song. What I wanna be able to do is use the push to play my scenes and then maybe use a secondary controller or something else to play some stuff live into it. So I want to simplify this layout. And what I do is I'm going to name my songs and I'm gonna use the new control surface script for the push one and two. To install it, so simple, it's a couple of folders dragged into the MIDI Live Remote Scripts folder of your installation of Ableton Live. And then in preferences, I've got the push to Excel script selected, which is the, uh, the advanced script that supports our Predator 2 product, which enables you when selecting devices to remap how they appear on the push to screen. And that is connected to the Ableton push to live port. I've then got a second entry and under that, I've got song mode push two, and that's connected to the user port of the push two. I've also got it connected so that it goes to the output as well. So let's hide that away. And what happens is basically when I select user mode, it goes into song mode. And song mode is divided into two halves. The top half is dedicated to selecting the songs, and the bottom half represents the scenes within that chosen song. I'm just gonna move through the songs here. I've got five, six set up. So song one, and I've got here the selection of the scenes. Let's have a look at that. So I've got a yellow one, and a green one, and a blue one, and I'm color coding these so that I know what the, the content of the scene contains. At the end, I've got a blue one. Let's uh, select that, and that's my stop. As you can see, my selected playing scene is flashing, and at the top in the song mode, it's flashing quite rapidly to tell me that there's a scene playing within that song. If I move to another song, set of scenes, set two, we have a slow flashing to show us that's the one that's selected, but we still have the flashing showing that there's a scene playing in a previous song. What happens though, when I go to three, and I've got more than 32 scenes, if we just scroll down here, um, yeah, there's lots and lots and lots of scenes. Well, that's very simple. The page buttons here allow me to move between the different banks of scenes, if you like, in 32 at a go. 
And how it recognises that these are songs and scenes is by the naming. Let's just scroll down here to song number five. You'll notice that there's not a lit light here, which means that there is no song four. Now, if I wanted to move the song five, which I select, and you can see it's the yellow, the purple, etc., I could command R, back, and song four. But I'd have to do that a number of times. So you can actually do it directly from the controller. So I've got the scene selected. I'm going to press the new button. I'm going to select the song that I want it to be configured to, which is four. Let's go down and I'm going to go new, four, new, four, new, four, new, four, new, four. The last one, new, four. Song five disappears. Simple as that. Now, to make it even quicker, if you have Max for Live as well, we also ship the product with a Max for Live device that enables you to select a number, whoops, not moving, select a number of scenes, hold down shift, choose your number, and either add the song name because you don't have one already, or replace the current song, or just purely remove it in total. Let's move a little bit further down and I've got Clipex actions going on. Let's just remove the follow scene device. Uh, I have follow scene on the, the full track so that I don't have to worry about follow actions and my scenes play as they should do, triggering the next scene at the current clip end effectively. So when this clip gets to this point, it will trigger beat song four. Let's look at song six though, let's select it. Now, song six, as you can see, has a break in it, but on the controller, you've got the first four clips. There's no spaces, so it compacts it, and you've got the, the fifth scene. Now, on this, I've got four bind actions, so when I'm using this with uh, a secondary controller, um, probably the MIDI fighty, t fighty fighter twister, um, what that enables me to do is focus on the currently selected device and switch the buttons and the encoders on the MIDI fighter twister to look after bank one and two, bank three and four, bank five and six, bank seven and eight. The red one is a reset and that effectively is a snap action and when it's triggered it will reset all of the mixer controls within my live set, which enables me to take it back to the start effectively. What I'm gonna do with that one though, is I'm gonna cut it, and you can see it's gone. It's like a magic trick. I'm going to insert a scene, and I'm going to replace that, and paste it in. And as you can see now, my reset clip is at the start, but I've got all my songs massively spread out and it pulls everything together. I've got this final scene here, which actually is my kind of stop all button, which I can do here. I of course have stop clip, I have play and delete and undo as well when I'm naming the clips and moving them, etc. Of course, click out of user mode and you've got the full functionality of the push one and two. Such a simple way of looking at your live set. Simplifying things so that you always know what song you're in, what scene's playing. It's really, for me, so simple. I don't know why Ableton haven't included them, it concluded it themselves, but who knows what they'll do next. Song mode for push one and push two by KB Solutions. Thanks for watching. Cheers.